So we're in a study of vapor power cycles. What is the strategy when you're given a problem like this? Can you break it down into steps? What would be, let's say, the first step? Draw the schematic, which is given here in the illustration. How many components? How many states in between each of the components? Four, okay. And what is flowing through each of those components? Mass, so we talk about the mass flow rate. So if there's so many kilograms per second through the boiler, it's the same kilograms per second through the turbine, same through the condenser. We're only going to do steady state. So once we have the schematic, maybe make a diagram, a property diagram. What is the most pertinent property diagram? A temperature entropy diagram. Then make a table. What type of table? We're going to make two tables. The first table is a table of? properties. So at each state we want to be able to get the properties. And the most important property at each state is the enthalpy. So enthalpy at 1, enthalpy 2, enthalpy 3, enthalpy 4. Why? Because they are the keys to get the heat and the work transfers for each of the devices when we do a control volume analysis around the turbine, control volume analysis around the condenser, etc. So then the next table is a table of uh, transfers. The transfers for each device, the turbine, the condenser, the pump, the boiler, and we want to get the Q's and the W's. And of that, there's eight of them. Four of them are zero, so that two devices are adiabatic, standard assumption, and two devices have no heat. Uh, no work transfer and if you sum the Q's you get Q net and if you sum the works you get work net and what does this Q net represent it's the net heat transfer per unit mass that's flowing in the loop into the cycle so if you do a large control volume around the whole system Q-net, you could think of is the net transfer into the cycle. And then what is W-net? The net work transfer out of the cycle, the net out of the whole cycle. All right? And they have to equal each other. Use that to detect any possible errors that you may have made. And if they match Good, that's what it needs to. If they don't match, then look for an error. QNet and WorkNet. All right. Then the last is you go ahead and calculate the metrics. What are we typically interested in? Thermal efficiency and the back work ratio. The thermal efficiency is a ratio of what is the net work or power out and this is either into the boiler or Q-net. Which one is it? Boiler. Just only into the boiler. We, we throw that energy out of the condenser, but that's just thermal pollution to the environment. And then the back work ratio is what percent of what comes out of the turbine goes back and feeds the pump. Now, if you... For each analysis, sometimes I'll do this. I'll do an analysis of the boiler. That's no problem. The standard direction for heat transfer is into the system. That's into the boiler. And then the standard uh, direction for the work transfer out of the turbine is positive out. But right here, I left with a choice. Last time I set it up and I said, I'm going to work with a positive Q out of the boiler. But if you work with a assumed positive direction of into the boiler, then this will be less than zero. It'll be a negative quantity. Okay? And then likewise for the pump, you say, that's not the direction. The pumps don't produce work or power. No. But if you think about the standard sign convention for a control volume around an entity, works out... And if you do that, this is negative. So if it's negative, sometimes you'll see and put an equation like negative WP divided by WT. 
right? All right. We're able to put it on a TS diagram. We need to be able to locate each of those states. Typically, you're just given the boiler pressure, the condenser pressure. There's only two pressures. Here is a temperature entropy diagram drawn to scale using software, reputable. We find the line of high pressure, the 8 megapascal. And we find the line of low pressure. Let's try and draw it whatever color, 20 kilopascal. And then we go ahead and put state 1, which is out of the boiler into the turbine. State 2, straight down because it's isentropic expansion. State 3 comes over, but you really need to think about putting 4 on the diagram before you put state 3 because 3 is right below 4. And 4 is saturated liquid. So we want to be able to sketch that on a temperature entropy diagram. Here are some uh, worked numbers for a Carnot vapor power cycle. Uh, again, here's the schematic, clearly the four components with four states. Here is a table of the properties. Notice the enthalpy is the key parameter. Yes, we have to have S, and I'm going to use V a little bit later, but you can get all kinds of other properties. But here, it's really not needed, the specific volume, but it's there. These are the quality, this is the temperature, pressure at all the states. Um, we stepped through it conceptually last time. Here are some numbers that you can use and solve a problem. Notice that the Q into the boiler is positive. The Q into the condenser, as I've done it now in this Excel file, is negative. So that when I do the sum to get Q net, I have 596.1. What exactly is 596.1? If you don't do that, ask yourself questions all the time when you're studying and solving problems. What is this 596.1? It's the heat transfer into the entire system per kilogram going through the loop of the working fluid, going through the loop per kilogram. Okay. And then here's the work out of the turbine. This is the work out of the pump. Notice it's negative. I said it's work out of the pump, and you have a negative on it. When you sum them, they are exactly the same for work net and Q net. Then we can compute three metrics. I know that the book doesn't emphasize work net as a metric, but it's a really good metric of how the system performs because you want to produce a lot of power, but you don't want to have a large M dot around because if you have a large M dot going around in a loop, you need big pipes, etc. Uh, but the two that are very important are the back work ratio and the thermal efficiency. And then we compare it with the Carnot thermal efficiency, 1 minus Tc over Th, where you're using Kelvin, not degree C for those temperature, and good to at least four digits when you run this is the, the very long, elaborate, you know, detailed calculations using enthalpies and the property tables, and then just using the temperatures. And wow, it's almost a miracle. It's just, how many people have done that? Worked the problem Carnot and then used the simple equation. Everybody should raise their hand by now. Come on, right? And, you, you, and weren't you startled when it's like such a simple little equation? And yet it agrees with all these detailed calculations. All right, let's press forward. In the Carnot vapor power cycle, the pump is impractical. Before we continue reading, what does impractical mean? It's not practical. So it's impractical, it's not practical. It's, there isn't a pump that can be designed or built that does the job that we asked it to do on our schematic, true? So. The, why is it? Because the pump is impractical because the working fluid going into the pump is, well, it should all be vapor. Is that the best answer? Or it should all be liquid. Is that the best answer? Or that it should be some liquid and some vapor going into the pump? Or it's too hot or it's too cold. Which one? 
It should be all liquid. Pumps take in liquids. What takes in a vapor and boosts the pressure? A compressor. So there's not much difference between a compressor and a pump other than one takes in a vapor or a gas and boosts the pressure, and the other takes in a liquid and boosts the pressure. The way they work often is very, very different, but they're both pressure-boosting devices. So the, the best answer is it's not practical because the working fluid needs to be all liquid going into a pump, and it's not in the Carnot. So it really brings us to the Rankine cycle. Now, Rankine cycle by itself will add the word ideal in front of it. What do you think the word ideal in front of it signifies? It's the best Rankine cycle it can be. Hence, it's not going to have a lot of friction in the turbine and a lot of irreversibilities in the turbine, nor in the pump. So the rate of entropy generation in the turbine and the rate of entropy generation, how, many, how much strong are the irreversibilities in the pump, are both uh, zero. Okay? All right. Uh, so we have an ideal Rankine cycle, which is a variation of the Carnot vapor power cycle. And the big change is that the fluid that exits the condenser isn't a two-phase liquid vapor mix. It's all liquid. It's saturated liquid. And that's what goes into the pump, saturated liquid. Sometimes you'll see the ideal Rankine cycle described as the practical Carnot vapor power cycle. Sometimes you'll see that. It's, it's pretty close to the Carnot cycle. And we're going to continue to change it up. But the basic idea here is just don't change state one. Don't change state two. Just change state three. And if it affects state four, so be it. Well, what about this word Rankin? Well, it's after somebody, a big, um, some, in science and engineering, he did a lot of work. Uh, here's his full name. Here are the years that he lived, 1820 to 1872. And if you know me, what do I look for? How many years the individual lived? What do you think? I think he died too young. There's something about thermodynamics. Everybody dies too young. <laughs> All right. Where is he from? And this is a little embarrassing because if I asked everybody in this room to draw a map of some part of the world and clearly show me where Scotland is, I would imagine a few of you would not be able to do it. But that's okay. There's probably some people in Scotland that couldn't draw a real map of Texas and then put a dot where San Antonio is either. So maybe we're fair on that. But really we should know because Scotland really was a part of the UK or is a part of the UK that is a hub of the Industrial Revolution as a key player in thermodynamics, especially Rankin and the university that he was at. So anyway, here are a few interesting tidbits. Oh, by the way, where is Scotland? It's in the UK and it's above England, right? Anybody ever been to Scotland? Great place to go. A lot of fun. So anyway, let's go. In 1842, he wrote a paper on fatigue and metal of railroad axles. So did a lot of work, not just in thermodynamics. In uh, 55, Queen Victoria appointed him chair of the Civil Engineering and Mechanics at the University of Glasgow. And in 59, hey, let's see now. He lived only 52. In 20, he was born. How old was he when he made wrote this big book? 39. He 39. He wrote a manual on the steam engine and other prime movers. And uh, he's honored. Is this the same ranking we have for the temperature scale? Yes. And we talk about the vapor power cycle in his name. And in the, he, there's still some other things that are, he's noted for in geomechanics, etc. You can still look at a book like this and read it online now. I, when I was in your shoes, I couldn't do that. <laughs> you had to go to a library and look, see if they had something on the shelf that you could actually read. But now you can pretty well get everything over the internet. Uh, I think it would be a very dense read for us.
very challenging read for us. Let's uh, press forward. Let's solve a problem or set it up. So we have water as a working fluid in an ideal Rankine vapor power cycle. Saturated vapor enters the turbine at 8 megapascal, and saturated liquid enters the pump at a pressure of 20 kilopascal. Determine the work developed by the turbine and pump, the heat transfer by in the boiler and the condenser, the thermal efficiency, the backward ratio. These are the standard sort of do the calculations, right? Analyze this cycle. So we want to set up our four components. I'm sure that you've already written that into your notes. They're the same four components, boiler, turbine, condenser, pump. State one, out of the boiler. Let's proceed. So let's go ahead and draw a table or construct a table of properties. So we're going to have state one, two, three, and four. We'll have the pressure and we'll work in kilopascal. There's only a high pressure, a boiler pressure, and a low pressure, the condenser pressure. Let's fill in the pressures right away. So it'll be 8,000 for the boiler pressure. That's the outlet to the boiler. And state four is the inlet to the boiler. Did that change? No. And then it's 20 and 20. Now we have temperature. And maybe I think over here for state one, it's P and saturated vapor, isn't it? Coming out of the boiler, state one. So this is T sat. Um, let me get my notes. That temperature is uh, slightly under 300 degrees C. It's around uh, 295 degrees C. All right. What's the quality? Well, it's saturated vapor. It's one. What's the enthalpy? That's H of G at that pressure. And so if you look in the table, it's 2758 kilojoules per kilogram. How about S in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin? Just look that up. 5.7432. How do I get state two? Determine the line of properties for state two. It goes from the turbine. It's isentropic expansion in the turbine. So this is 5.7432. And now I know pressure and entropy. I go ahead and get the quality. And if I get the X2, it comes in at 69.4%. Once I know the quality, then I can get the enthalpy. The enthalpy comes in at 1888.1 kilojoules per kilogram. What about state three? Well, it's a little different now because we're doing the ideal Rankine cycle, not the Carnot anymore. So state three, we know the pressure and it's saturated liquid. Okay, so if it's saturated liquid, what is the quality? Zero. And we read off H enthalpy of 251.4, that's the saturated liquid enthalpy at that pressure, and the entropy if you need it, 0 0.8320. It goes through a pump. We said the pump for an ideal Rankine cycle, focus or emphasis on ideal, is uh, what about it? It's reversible. So what about the S coming out of the pump? Do you see that? And so now we know the pressure and entropy. It's the same game. Do you have your thermodynamic properties table? If you're not, are you sitting next to somebody that does? Can you begin working on getting H at state 4? I want you to help me get H at state 4. So there's two ways to approach this problem. See a lot of people were struggling. They put a TS diagram. I purposefully kind of avoided that so that I would see if you would do that. And we put a dome and we put a line of low pressure and we put a line of high pressure and we put location for state one, location for state two, location now for state three. It's not under here. It's moved all the way. We're at state four, directly above three. 
and it's on that higher pressure line, and there's state four. Where did four used to be? So three moved from here over, and four moved from there down. True? How many people figured that one out? Now tell me what is state four. Should I look for the quality at state four? No. What is describe state four? Compressed liquid or subcooled liquid, either way you can call it, but it's compressed liquid. Does that help you? What table, thermodynamics table, do we have for compressed liquid for water? A5. Some people ask me, hey, is the answer in table A5? The answer is yes in table A5 if you're good at interpolation because you have this entropy and that pressure and you'll need to do a double interpolation but we already had three four people get the right answer none of them use table a5 you can get the right answer using table a5 you will not lose points but you're gonna have to do a double interpolation how many want to do that on a timed exam no all right so Lou gave me the first correct answer I think you did right so help me out. Give me in your words. How did you solve it without using table A5? So he used VDP. Does that hint help you? He says, basically, I focus on the pump. I have fluid coming into the pump at state 3, fluid going out of the pump at state 4. We already know the pressure is a lot higher. And we also know, depending which way you want to draw the pump, we can show the work into the pump, W, lowercase wp. So WP is equal to the integral of VDP or the integral of PDV or some other integral. Okay, let's only pick from those two. Let's only pick from those two. All right, where did we see it in Thermo 1? I'm... The end of the entropy chapter, the very last section of the entropy chapter. It talked about a control volume around a device. You have fluid flow in and out. It's going to be reversible to get the minimum work in or the maximum work out. It's going to be adiabatic. And the first time you saw it, you said, I understand work, the integral, PDV. That looks like boundary work. That makes sense to me. But this is thermodynamics. Things that look backwards are correct. True or false? And so this is not it for an open system. Oh, that's correct for a closed system, but we're doing an open system analysis around a device like a pump. Does the liquid change density, or is it compressed a lot, or, or, or can we treat liquid as incompressible? If we could treat it as incompressible, doesn't the specific volume, isn't that constant as it goes through the pump? So we, it comes out, and then we get this relationship that the work of the pump is V dP. So it's like the specific volume of the fluid coming in at state 3 times the exit pressure at 4 minus the inlet pressure at 3. That's what you used. Who else gave me the correct answer? That's what you used, right? Somebody else gave me the correct answer. Who was it in the room? Isn't that what you used? That's what we all used. It only works in special cases. Look at back at chapter 6. I'll try and emphasize it again. But what you do is you calculate the work of the pump, and then you calculate that H4 is equal to the initial inlet enthalpy plus how much work comes into the working fluid as it flows through. And it then comes out at uh, 259.5 kilojoules per kilogram. What was the boost? Well, it was about 8.1 kilojoules per kilogram. That was the boost. All right. So now we make a table for our Qs and our Ws for each of the devices, a turbine, condenser, a pump, boiler. You know what? We already did the right here. It's negative 8.1 because it's really, um, depending on how you handle that sign, okay, uh, for the pump. And then what we can calculate is we can calculate QNET. Let me scroll down a little bit. QNET is 861.8 uh, 
and work net, 861.8 kilojoules per kilogram. Once I have those, I'm ready to calculate my efficiencies and, and that. So the, the back work ratio is around 0.93%. All right, 0.93%. That's about the interest rate you're paid on the money in the bank, right? Oh, you want to borrow money from the bank? Just move that decimal place right over there, all right? But if you want to get interest on your money in the bank, leave the decimal. Is that a lot? Is 0.93% a lot? It's very small. Some people will confuse 0.93% with 93%. They are much different. <laughs> much different, true? So this is very, very small. And then the thermal efficiency for this cycle comes in around 34 point something percent, 34.5%. percent. All right. So there's a, some numbers for this. Let's do this. If you use table A5, you have to get to 8 megapascal. Then you have to do the interpolation. It's a double interpolation. And what you'll find is that H4 comes in at 262 kilojoules per kilogram. You say, why is it so much different? Because the interpolation is a linear interpolation, and the numbers are changing dramatically in our table. It's so it'll, I wouldn't call it off points, but don't do it during the exam. It's not as accurate. It'll take you a lot of time, the double interpolation in the table. How many people were started on that route and could have done it that way and were work making progress but ran out of time, right? Yeah. All right. Now, this is a TS diagram. This is drawn to scale with the RefProp software. There is state one. There is state two out of the turbine. Then state three is over here. Where is state four? I'm going to pause and walk around. All right. Um, to answer this question, what we really need is we need the line. Let me do this. What does the line of 20 kilopascal, the line of constant pressure of 20 kilopascal, we, we call that an iso bar, iso bar. Line of con like an isotherm is a line of constant temperature. This is a line. Of it goes from here, 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 all the way down. Hits, does a little kink, gets into the dome. All of these states, and then it gets all the way over to here. And does it end? Where does it go from there? Do you know it's actually plotted? And this is a very good plot. It's plotted there. It's just that the last line, which is the red line for the dome is on top of it and so it covers the blue line in this section right here because what does it look like? It looks like only a red line. But if you look closely, there's actually a little bit of blue in it. It's underneath. All right, let's do it for the next line. It's the eight. Does the eight megapascal stop here? Does it continue over here? Which some students will assume it does incorrectly. And then they'll put state four, aha. There's where state four is. Don't fall for that trap. So where is the line for the eight megapascal? Is it drawn? Did I fail to draw it? Maybe I failed to draw it and needs to come over here, and, and there's where state four is. Is that true? Or is the line actually drawn on this diagram? It's actually drawn on this diagram. So where is the line? So in the textbook, and when I do the TS diagram for something like the ideal Rankine cycle, I'm going to exaggerate where that line is in the subcooled liquid region. I'm going to exaggerate it like this, and then you'll get the impression that state 4 has a temperature. Oh, state 3 has a temperature around 60 degrees C. State 4 must have a temperature of like 100 and something degrees C. But that's a gross exaggeration it's not true you know in this software they allow us to zoom in there's the zoom in around that point there is state three and there is state four this is still a ts diagram but look at the scale what is this 50 what 50 what 50 what so what is the temperature difference between state three and state four as accurate as we can get it with the ref prop software about of a third, maybe a half a degree C. 
So you asked a very good question. You said, hey, what's about the temperature? Oh, it's a little warmer, but it's not a lot warmer, is it? And so if I had to neglect, I'd say it's the same temperature as day three, but then all of a sudden, then they're on top of each other on the TS diagram because it was isentropic through the pump, but no temperature change. So anyway, those dots are so close together. Yes, if you look really, really closely, there's two circles there. It's slightly larger than this single circle and this single circle right there. Can you tell the difference? Slightly? No? All right, well, here are some numbers. So for this problem, to flush it out, notice I added the V column because I'm going to use that to calculate the work to calculate the enthalpy exiting at state 4. I really didn't use the S. It's embedded in the assumption of the integral VDP equation. But if you do the interpolation in A5, it's not as accurate. Uh, you don't use this but you'll get this number, and they're pretty close, aren't they? All right, and if you do the interpolation, you'll get a temperature which is a little bit larger than the 0 0.3, 0 0.5 degrees C, because that double interpolation will allow you to do the temperature as well. So here are the values of the backwork ratio, the thermal efficiency. Notice, can I use the Carnot thermal efficiency equation? All I did was come out of the condenser fully condensed. The pump is still reversible. The turbine is still reversible. How come the ideal Rankine cycle doesn't give me the Carnot efficiency? Because something went, is different. But what? And we have a couple true false. I'll pick it up there next time, but they'll explore why. Is it because now in the ideal Rankine cycle, turbine and pump are less reversible? We'll pick up there next time. Thank you for your attention.